Okay, in this lesson, we're going to take a look at coagulation studies. In order to understand uh, how coagulation studies work, we have to look at, we evaluate three things. We look at uh, PT, which is called prothrombin time. We look at PTT, which is partial thromboplastin time. And we look at this thing called INR, which is international normalized ratio. Now, these are um, the tests that we do in the first, and the first two are actually measured in seconds. So PT is 11 to 14 seconds, and then the PTT is 25 to 35 seconds. Now, the INR is actually not measured in time, but it's a ratio. And what they do is they take the PT number and they plug it into some sort of crazy formula, and it kicks out this number. And we're going to talk about the specifics of the INR here in a minute. But the thing that you need to realize is that the normal value for INR is 0.8 to 1.2. So let's get to the ins and outs of what these values are. The first thing we're going to look at are two different pathways. You have the intrinsic pathway and the extrinsic pathway. Coagulation pathways and cascades are really complex. And with intrinsic pathways, what happens is there's a signal that's, that's, that happens from um, an injury. And that, uh, that injury either occurs inside, inside the cell or the body. And we use this test called PTT in that, and it measures for a specific uh, clotting factor. So we look at factors uh, 12, 11, 9, 8, 10, 5, 2, and 1. And the, what you need to realize or what you need to remember is that heparin therapy is what we use to measure. Um, when, we, when we have patients that are under heparin, undergoing heparin therapy, we use PTT to evaluate the efficacy of that. Now, with the extrinsic pathway, it's a little bit different. So you have an injury that occurs outside the cellular body. And so think like with trauma. So you have this initiation of, of the, uh, the coagulation cascade because there's that injury. And we use PT and INR to test for this. Now, like we talked about in the last slide, how um, it's a standardized test and the way it works, here's how it works. So you've got this blood sample here and they introduce something called a tissue factor, which helps to form a fibrin clot. And this can come from humans, from bovine porcine. But what they do is they measure, measure the time and then they put it into a formula and it gives you INR. And the important thing to remember here is that INR is used for warfarin therapy. So I'm sure you're saying, hey, I've got this question now. You've got two different anticoagulants. You've got two different tests. Uh, what's the difference? Well, with warfarin therapy, warfarin interferes with specific factors. Um, so they basically stop. Um, and that's why we use the PT and INR. Heparin, however, enhances an enzyme and that is specific and it has nothing to do with vitamin K, which, uh, warfarin does. And so, and that's why the, the heparin is more specific to the PTT. Now there's a cheat sheet that's going to be attached to this lesson. And it's really great for checking out these different types of pathways and how the different drugs interact with them. So I really recommend that you check them out, but what do you need to know specifically? The things you need to recognize is that heparin is used with PTT and then warfarin is used with INR. So what tubes do we send them in and what does the process look like? Well, you're going to send all of your coagulation studies in a blue top tube and it has citrate in it, which is used as an anti-clotting ad additive. And there's a certain amount of the citrate in here. And it's really important that when you introduce your blood sample into the, uh, the tube that you actually fill the tube all the way up and there's going to be a mark and that makes sure that it doesn't uh, alter the test in any way. Now, what's also really important about some of your coagulation studies, especially your PTT is for your patients that are on heparin therapy. We want to make sure that we're not uh, basically giving them too many uh, or too much heparin. So you're going to redraw your PTT at specific intervals. So pay attention to what your lab orders are, what your provider's orders are, and what your facility policy is in regarding these particular labs because they are time sensitive. What does an abnormal value look like for your coagulation studies, in particular your PTT? Well, again, these are measured in time. So anything that's elevated, quote unquote, is going to be your prolonged, um, it's going to be, it's called a prolonged time or increased time. And you're going to see this with patients that have uh, DIC or disseminated intravascular coagulation. But what happens is uh, their clotting systems are going just haywire. So what we do is we introduce blood transfusion. So they'll get things like blood product, and that helps to reset their system. That's the goal. Uh, they'll also get probably some IV fluids. They'll get some platelets um, and they'll probably go to critical care because they are uh, tenuous, meaning that they have the ability to get sick really quickly. Uh, so they need to be under really careful observation. You're also gonna see a prolonged um, 
PTT times with liver disease and vitamin K deficiency. Um, the other time that you're going to uh, see it is this condition called von Willebrand disease, where there's actually either an altered or an um, an absence of the von Willebrand factor. And they treat this with desmopressin because this will actually increase your uh, clotting times. The other time you'll see it is when your patients are on heparin. They're getting heparin drips. This is why we monitor them so closely until they're they're a little bit sta a little bit more stable and they're um, they're getting the therapy that that they need. So uh, your if your patient's on heparin um, on a heparin drip, just make sure that you're going to be checking this PTTM. So what about PT and INR? Well, for your prolonged PT and INR values, you're going to see again DIC. You'll you'll do those blood transfusions, the blood products that probably get critical care. You also see it in liver disease. You also see it in vitamin K deficiency. Now you also see it increase in warfarin therapy, and this is this is to be expected. We want their warfarin um, values to be up just a little bit, but you need to uh, ask the provider what their order is, what the goal is. Um because we want to make sure that it's not too high. Uh, it's what, it, what is their goal? So you may see a goal of like, uh, cause the upper level is to 1.2. So you may see a goal of 1.2 to 2.5 is normal for the patient. So if you see a value of six, come back, you, you know, Hey, wait, this is way too high. This patient's definitely at risk for bleeding. Um, so, um, just talk to your provider, ask what their goal is. Uh, seeing a decreased time in uh, a PT and an INR for a patient is not very common, but if they do, they they may have uh, elevated or, or excessive vitamin K. Uh, they may be on some sort of birth control. Um, this is why the blood clots happen is because uh, it increases that risk. So our nursing concepts for this lesson really focused on those lab values and also focused on clotting when we're dealing with coagulation studies. So let's recap. So PTINR, this is a measurement of the prothrombin time and it tests for warfarin, whereas your PTT is your partial thromboplastin time and it tests for heparin. Again, these are evaluated in time. And so if you have excessive time or prolonged time, they, you have an increased risk for bleeding. You're gonna submit those samples in a, blood, in a blue top tube. You wanna make sure you fill that tube up uh, and make sure you follow facility policy. And the last thing is you wanna recommend to your patient you want to educate those patients. You want to uh, know that they are on a type of medication that's going to put them at risk uh, for excessive bleeding, and they need to understand the risk. Um, you need to make sure that they know when to go to the emergency room, especially for those patients that are on warfarin therapy. Uh, do your due diligence and educate your, your patient and be their advocate. So that's it for our lesson on coagulation studies. Make sure you check out all the resources attached to this lesson. Now go out and be your best selves today, and as always, happy nursing.